Now, worst case scenario, God forbid this happens to Casa Maritime, but I want you to be aware of everything. I need to be very transparent with you whenever I come across any information. And that's the reason this channel was even made, to be very fully transparent with you and to let you know the whole case scenario. That way you know, again, where your hard earned money is at. How's it going everybody? It's Adam coming to you with so many questions that I have just received because of the last video I made regarding Caster Maritime. What is NASDAQ compliance? Does Caster Maritime qualify to be granted the NASDAQ compliance as of now? Is the CEO doing what he's supposed to be doing so that his company gets granted the compliance and doesn't get delisted from NASDAQ? What happens if the company doesn't meet the NASDAQ compliance after the first 180 days deficiency notice? That was granted to CTRM back in December 30th and it has extension until June 28th. Let's answer all these questions and put this case to rest. Now everything I say in this video is basically coming straight from NASDAQ themselves. It is not my opinion, it's just the research that I have made so that we understand what does it mean to be granted the 180 extension day so that you can meet NASDAQ compliance. Now the first question, what is NASDAQ compliance? According to NASDAQ themselves, they said if a company trades for 30 consecutive trading days below the $1 minimum closing bid price requirement, NASDAQ will send a deficiency notice to the company advising that it has been afforded a compliance period of 180 calendar days to regain compliance with the applicable requirements. Meaning that if the company goes for 30 days, 30 trading days below a dollar, NASDAQ will issue a deficiency notice saying, hey, you have been under a dollar for 30 days and we are giving you 180 days extension period in which you have to go back above a dollar and maintain that price for 10 consecutive trading days. That way you might be reevaluated and regain compliance. And that's exactly what happened to Castor Maritime back in December 30th, the year 2020. Castor Maritime received 180 day extension from NASDAQ to meet NASDAQ minimum price bid. So basically back in December 30th, they received the deficiency notice from NASDAQ and the note states that they have 180 days, meaning they have until June 28th of the year 2021 so that they can actually meet the compliance requirements. Now, why hasn't Casta Maritime regained compliance since we have noticed it staying above a dollar for 10 consecutive days? Here is the reason. According to NASDAQ, under certain circumstances to ensure that the company can sustain long-term compliance, NASDAQ may require the closing bid price to equal or to exceed the $1 minimum bid price requirement for more than 10 consecutive days before determining that a company complies. What we call NASDAQ confirmation. So basically, yes, you stayed above $1 for 10 consecutive days, but we need to make sure that you are able to sustain that price for more than 10 days. In determining whether to look beyond the 10 days, NASDAQ will consider, but not limited to the following factors. These are basically the NASDAQ confirmation factors. What are they? Margin of compliance, meaning the amount by which the price is above the $1 minimum standard. Is it just meaning the $1 or is it really able to sustain above the dollar? Second thing will be the trading volume. Are people really interested in the stock? And I can tell you they are so much with the hype going on to the point that this stock became too personal for some people. How many times have you heard the saying, if the ship sinks, I'm going down with it. So it's no longer a trading experience with this company. It became too personal for some people, which I really don't advise to because whenever you trade, never, never, ever trade with emotions. It's not because you love the company, you go down with it. I'm not saying this company is going down. All I'm saying is learn to trade without emotions. Take emotions out of it. This is your hard earned money learn where to invest it but if you see that the company doesn't have good potential it doesn't have a decent plan it's not making the movements the ceo cares less about being listed or not listed in the nasdaq why go down with it so let's go back to nasdaq confirmation we said margin of compliance meaning how much above a dollar can you sustain as a company in nasdaq second thing is a trading volume meaning how much interest how much trading activity is taking place within a certain stock so a lack of trading volume might indicate a lack of bona fide market interest the word bona fide is a latin word which means in good faith so nasdaq basically just wants to make sure the price above dollar is actually in good faith there's no fraud activity taking place 
there is nothing going on that's kind of shady with the stock. And the third thing, the trend of the stock price, is it moving up or down? So after staying above a dollar for 10 days, is it going back to plummeting below a dollar, back to 16 cents? Or is it able to sustain the $1 period and even exceed that? Now, worst case scenario, God forbid this happens to Casa Maritime, but I want you to be aware of everything. I need to be very transparent with you whenever I come across any information. And that's the reason this channel was even made, to be very fully transparent with you and to let you know the whole case scenario. That way you know, again, where your hard-earned money is at. If such a company does not regain compliance with the bid price requirement, a second 180-day compliance period may be available. So it doesn't mean that if we reach June 28th, the company will be delisted if it's not meeting compliance. A second 180 days might be granted to Castor Maritime again. I don't really see this happening with Castor Maritime because of the amount of development the CEO himself has been making. All other initial inclusion requirements for the capital market except for the bid price requirement and provides written notice that it intends to regain compliance with the bid price requirement during the second 180 days compliance period by effecting a reverse split if necessary. So basically one of two things could happen, either the file, either the CEO himself has to write a notice to NASDAQ saying we are going to do the following, that way we can be relisted in NASDAQ if they get delisted, or he can go straight up and say you know what, we will take a reverse split. Basically means you take some shares and you combine them into just one share, that way you're able to sustain a price above a dollar. For example, if a stock is worth 25 cents, a reverse split will be something like taking four shares and basically binding them into just one share. So if you have four shares in a company, you wake up the next trading day and you see that it's only one share, it used to be 25 cents, but it's now a dollar. So delisting is not really that necessary if a company doesn't meet compliance. It has another 180 days after June 28th. And then it has two options, whether to write a notice to NASDAQ saying we have a decent solid plan or to just say, you know what, we're going to reverse split the stock. And again, I don't really see this happening with Castor Maritime, but hey, don't take this as a financial advice. Now, panels may also consider other factors such as the company's fundamental financial strengths and weaknesses. In the case of Castor Maritime, it has solid, solid financials. It's only been making earnings. The company does not have any debt, as I have mentioned in the past so many times. The CEO himself knows how to bring revenue into the company, which is a sign of strength, not weakness, in the case of Castor Maritime. Now, say the company has made compliance and it stayed above a dollar after that, and it has shown a lot of interest, bona fide, and everything seems to be going very smooth for a company. What would happen so that they actually get issued the certificate of compliance here's what happens although an automated computer system tracks each company's bid price on a daily basis it is suggested that the company contact its listing qualification analyst when it believes compliance has been achieved meaning pictures himself the ceo of the company kind of needs to reach out to nasdaq and say hey my company has been above a dollar there's a lot of interest in the company my financials are solid however the reason i believe he did not do that as of now is because of the market correction which brought the price back below a dollar i believe he will go ahead and do so as he is a big firm believer in his own company and he has been working day and night to make these aggressive developments in the company however i believe he's waiting for the company to go back above a dollar and sustain that price for some period of time that way whenever he reaches out to nasdaq he gets the confirmation so with that being said i just wanted to clear out what does that mean to have nasdaq compliance now in my pure personal opinion this company is going to get the nasdaq confirmation before june 28th don't take this as a financial advice However, I see them doing these aggressive movements. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification button. As you know, these videos take a long time to make. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Stay safe, stay well, make money. See you next video.